And so it begins, Americans getting kicked out of their apartments or houses. It's, um, it's a shit show. It's a shit show. It's uh, a moral disgrace, that's for sure. Okay. Yes, I care about the small landlords because they have bills to pay as well. You know, I was thinking about this. This is a government taking without just compensation. It's a government taking without just compensation. And I never read the Supreme Court ruling, that Supreme Court ruling that said that the CDC is, um, doesn't have the authority to um, put a moratorium on evictions. I didn't read that, but you know what? Mm -mm -mm. I uh, just found out. So, evictions start with Nancy Pelosi and the House on a seven-week break. And the pain starts in the South. Oh, boy. Well, there are states, you know, that favor tenants over landlords. Uh, I would say, having my experience in South Carolina, didn't know that a landlord can kick you out for anything nothing, don't like you, go out, you're gone for nothing. That really surprised me. It didn't surprise me to learn that South Carolina is the leading state, or it was last year, the leading state for evictions. Wow, a lot. Okay, so what do we have here? Nancy Pelosi tweeted this yesterday. It is a moral imperative to keep people from being put out in the street, which also contributes to the public health emergency. The virus is still a threat. The moratorium must be extended. And the funds Congress allocated to assist renters and landlords must be spent as she's sitting in her friggin' mansion eating really expensive ice cream. It's a moral imperative from the House Speaker. Ooh, ooh, something's very wrong here. Something's very wrong here. Now, I posted a video on these evictions and the moratorium uh, to be lifted on August 1. Um, in that video, you heard Nancy who actually put it back into the CDC's hands. Yet the Supreme Court came out and said, can't be in their hands. But I didn't know that Kavanaugh, who wrote the opinion, well, he wrote this. He wrote this. Um, in my view, clear and specific congressional authorization via new legislation would be necessary for the CDC to extend the moratorium past July 31. Oh, the Supreme... So, I am... I really um, like it. I don't know if that's the right word. When I read what I think or what I've said in videos by other people, you know, it's that like-minded, and it's also, oh, okay, good, good. So, Mike Shedlock, Mish Talk here, Global Economics, Global Politics. It seems to me you are asking the CDC to overrule the Supreme Court. Two, you were warned in advance of this event by the Supreme Court. It was back in May? Wow. Okay. Three, you had months to do something and didn't, Nancy. You did nothing. 
You did nothing. Oh, your kids um, in the house, they're on it. Oh, they're expressing their outrage. Oh, my God. Warren, Warren unloads on Congress over failing to pass evictions moratorium. Where were you? Where were you, Warren, uh, prior to the moratorium lifting? And I'm not saying, look, we're in a shit show, okay? You got that moratorium, the landlords are screwed. You lift it, the renters are screwed. And I am not talking about those who take advantage of a system. Yeah, they're out there, but we've got 7 to 12 million facing eviction. You really think all of those people are, oh, oh, a moratorium, good. I don't have to pay my rent, and I won't. So I'll live through this moratorium and then get evicted. Yay! I don't like the talk I'm hearing or the comments I've been reading. Yeah, there are uh, a whole lot of Americans who are just unbelievably messed up and want to take advantage of anybody. We know that. I'm not talking about them. I'm talking about what I believe is the majority who got screwed over last year because of, oh, we've got to shut down this economy. Oh, of course, uh, those who are essential get to work and get a paycheck. But most of you, mm, non-essential. Goodbye. And people actually think that 1,200, what, was it two 1,200s and one 1,400? And wow, that's just going to make everybody absolutely fine. It's a measly amount. But I hear people talking about how they're out buying cars with that. They're out buying uh, big TVs. Okay. There's a lot of people freaking out. There's a lot of people who lost their job and can't find another one. There's a lot of people who lost their job that that job, even though they may have been paying, uh, living paycheck to paycheck, they were able to meet their bills. Now the economy, 7 million jobs are gone, are gone. A whole lot of jobs are being taken over by robots. We're a service sector economy. So people are saying, I see, I see for hiring signs all over. McDonald's, Burger King. You know, it's a shit show. <laughs> we needed to get away from these people who control our lives. We needed to sit down, landlords, tenants, you know, all of them, and work something out so that everybody's happy. But there's an awful lot of landlords who are also incredibly greedy. So once the moratorium is lifted, they're even kicking out tenants who are not behind on their rent. Why? Yeah, because I can and I will. And then I'm going to jack up the rent like everybody else is doing all over the place. It's a shit show. All of these tenants now are being, well, get out of the apartment and good luck for you. Uh, you've got now an eviction on your record, making it harder to find a place. Rents are skyrocketing all over, but people are not in the type of jobs today that they can afford the skyrocketing rents. Yes, we will see a tremendous amount of people homeless because we're a messed up people. And we can't figure anything out. And these people, oh yeah, Warren, go on. I, I can't even listen to her, I'm sorry. I'll link below. Hey, you can listen to the six minute speech. Oh my God. How could this be? And all these people getting evicted. Oh, and you decided to come out, speak out about it, what, the day before the moratorium lifts? Hmm. Good. Good timing. 
How about AOC? She too. We were sounding the alarm about this issue. Hmm. Really? Well, it might have been, but I didn't get that alarm. Bell. Cory Bush. Cory Bush is sleeping out on the Capitol steps to protest evictions. It's her party that didn't do anything. Did not do a thing. And they waited until it was way too late. That should piss everybody off, right? Well, it does me. Moral imperative to keep people. Well, Pelosi, somehow you putting it back in the CDC's hands. Ah, was that just a mistake? Or did you want this to occur? I think you wanted it to occur because you're a malignant narcissist who doesn't care. You kind of like, oh, look at all of these people now without a home. Yes, malignant narcissists are like that. Trust me, I have a mother. I have a sadistic, narcissistic brother. They're happy. They were very happy that I went homeless. They're sick. There's, uh, try to put yourself, try to put yourself in the shoes of Nancy Pelosi. Could you understand? Could you, can you, uh, is there anything that you could relate to? I sure can't. I've tried to put myself in the shoes of my mother, my sister, my brother, and well, came up empty. came up empty. I know what this feels like. I'm living it again, by the way. <laughs> yeah. Ah. Something's very wrong. Something's very wrong, look, with all of us. I... Uh, when I finally got, and this was like two decades ago, taking a walk in the woods, so many moments where it was like you're, you're literally brought to full stop. <laughs> that awakening, the epi epiphany of, oh my God. Well, that epiphany that I'm talking about now was, I'm not the only one messed up. It seems that an awful lot are messed up. And when I got that, I felt less ashamed for my being messed up. Didn't stop me from working on myself. Um, but what's the big deal? Just admit we're messed up. We're not right. As they say in the South, you ain't right. You ain't right. We're not right. As, as a people, we got this all wrong. Very few live, you know, with a, with a moral center, living principled lives. They speak a good game but they don't live it. So people get screwed all the time. And then they get shamed for being screwed. What are we doing here? Yeah, of course. Very specific congressional authorization. You know, Supreme Court ruling. Congress, do something. Oh, I guess we just don't. We won't do anything. We'll just let this go on. And I'm going to lie to the American people. I'll put it in uh, the CDC's hands because I know the American people are just the lost people and they don't really look into any details. So I can just say that and go on vacation. In my view, clear and specific congressional authorization 
would be necessary for the CDC to extend the moratorium past July 31st. Now, you know, every time I think about this, I also think about the landlords who are getting screwed. And I'm not talking about the black rocks or... Uh, or the corporate landlords. I'm talking about the innocent small landlord who has had to continue paying the bills while their tenants didn't. Can we get our Congress to be effective it was a taking by Congress. It was a taking by federal government to shut down the economy, taking away 7 million jobs, leaving Americans without any money. Oh, and then I hear, oh, my God, you know, they were getting so much un un unemployment. And do you know how many people just didn't get any unemployment? What I hate, though, is that, oh, yeah, there are people who got a whole lot in unemployment and just kind of lived out the moratorium, and I guess maybe they don't even care if they get evicted. I'm not talking about the people who play the system. I'm talking about the ones who are really getting hurt. You know, the people who play the system have issues that they have to work out. Okay, forget about them. It's the innocent ones, the mothers, the mothers and fathers with kids who are getting booted out. You know, it, it, it strikes me as odd. You know, it's almost like, all right, how many are out there that have, like, no empathy whatsoever? It's scary. But when you leave comments like that, you literally just have, you know, dug the grave of the innocent ones that you don't seem to care about. And then I hear, you know, well, what are we supposed to do? Go to a food bank in your area. Go to a, uh, you know, if you have a community where, the, but th this is the shit show, okay? We got to the shit show because we didn't do anything before. You know, 12 years I've been saying, you've got to know your neighbors. You've got to, you know, um, develop some kind of community you know, be honest and, you know, live uh, live your principles and become trustworthy in your community. Find out what your community is doing. Find a uh, shit show. Here we are. Mississippi, South Carolina, Georgia tenants are more likely to carry rent, rent debt than the U.S. average. In Mississippi, tenants can lose their eviction case and be removed from their home on the same day. Whoa. Well, people are already being removed. Arkansas landlords can pursue criminal charges for tenants who don't pay rent. Wow. Western Tennessee, where a federal judge ruled that the CDC ban was unconstitutional, uh, tenants are already getting evicted for non-payment. Rent increases in cities like Charlotte, North Carolina, Jacksonville, Florida, Memphis, Tennessee have outpaced the rest of the country in terms of rent increases. Rent rose in by 12.7% in Atlanta and suburbs, 20%. Federal program only pays 60% of lost rent to landlords. Admittedly, that's much better than nothing, but it's also an illegal action by the government to impose such losses. 
Our government is a criminal government destroying all of us. And we just fight one another, judge one another. God, man, when is it going to stop? You know, okay, you would have thought with this moratorium lifting that they would have been on it, but not, not the day before the lift. Okay? All right, so the program, the rental assistance, how much did you hear about the rental assistance? I hardly heard anything. So, you know, the money does not go to renters, but they, the renters still have to apply, but didn't. Okay, well, some did. Um, who even knew about it? You know, it's like you hear our Nancy Pelosi Oh, it's the American Rescue Plan. And we're allocating billions for rental assistance. But where are the people telling the renters that they have to apply, that they have to, you know, do that? Very, very little of that goes on. And Biden administration did little or nothing to promote this assistance. So you have an awful lot of Americans who are like freaking out about the pandemic. You've got a lot of stress, the non-essentials. Oh my God, I never knew I was non-essential, but I guess I am. So I have to stay home and I don't get any income. And oh, unemployment, remember the nightmare? And the sites going down? And so many people, and I've posted on it, well, it's now two months later and I still haven't received anything. Come on, guys. You know, it, it's like you recognize how our government seems to favor the rich. Not terribly effective in terms of its services. And then when you get the ineffectiveness causing people to literally be on the street Everybody wants to judge him. Jesus. Wow. Well, there's a lot. There's a lot. And I, I'm, you know, I just wish we had more empathetic Americans because people are really scared. People are really scared. For good reason. Yeah, this guy in Rhode Island. Uh, my name is Louis Fertens. I'm 43 years old. I'm a landscaper, and I was living in Riverside until today, because they evicted me and gave me exactly three weeks to get out. And unfortunately, I have no place to go and nowhere else to go. I got sick and ended up being backed up by my rent because I was in the hospital for a while. And also I got backed up during the winter time because of the pandemic and the coronavirus and I ended up being backed up on my rent and my landlord doesn't want to hear it. So he got me evicted. I feel lost. I feel helpless. I feel like I can't do anything. Even though I work and I got a full-time job, I can't, it doesn't help. It ain't helping me right now. And nobody seems to want to help. Right now, I don't know. I have no plan. I'm screwed. <laughs> Pretty much screwed. I have no plan. They gave me three weeks. They wanted to give me six days to get out. They gave me three weeks because I begged for it. And in three weeks, I have no idea where I'm going to go or what I'm going to do. I was backed up four months, and I ended up talking to my landlord, telling him the situation with my medical, and trying to see if he would work with me, and he didn't want to hear it. He's like, why am I going to wait for your rent when I can get somebody else moving in here? So he's throwing me out to get somebody else in so he can get his money, which I kind of agree with the guy. He needs to make his money too, but you got to work with people. Everybody's having hardships right now. Everybody needs a little bit of help from somebody. 
the money. It's way too expensive. Rent oh, right, prices are outrageous. I almost paid 900 and that's for one little tiny bedroom. I've looked for other apartments. I can't afford them. There's no way by myself I can afford what the rents are right now. It's outrageous out here. Yeah, it is. It really is. But here, a single mother with, I think, three children in Colorado. But families that received emergency assistance could still be facing eviction. That's right. Denver 7's Russell Haythorn has one mother's story from Lyons. <laughs> she found this place last year. It's a great spot. A quaint little neighborhood in the small town of Lyons, perfect for raising kids. Great neighbors who are really supportive and helpful. My kids have a community. But what she thought was perfect. I wasn't behind on rent at all. All changed a few weeks ago when Erica Joy was slapped with an eviction notice. This is frustrating. I, I, I know that that's happening in a lot of places where the non-renewal evictions are increasing. Erica is a school psychologist who was out of work last year because of COVID. So she applied for government rental assistance last fall and was approved. Since then, I've been I've caught up on rent. I'm, I'm good. I've been actually ahead a little bit, which is great. Yet her landlord is still evicting her. Erica believes it's because she's on rental assistance. I really feel like that was going to happen regardless because I got the government grant. It's a little bit of a, uh, a uh, landlord's market right now. Jonathan Capelli with the Neighborhood Development Collaborative says Erica's case is indicative of what could be a wave of evictions just the tip of the iceberg. If there's any reason why you don't like your tenant and you can see this as an opportunity to uh, upgrade the unit and get in a higher income uh, tenant, then why would you cut them a break? In Erica's case, she says she jumped through all the hoops. I received an email from my landlord on April 30th that if I wanted to renew, I needed to submit re-verification of income or get a co-signer. So she did. Got her dad to co-sign, has a new job lined up for this school year, and yet here she is. Our custody agreement for us to be 50-50 is that we both live in this town. In Lyons. I have a week and there's nothing for rent in town. Russell Haythorn, Denver 7. Okay. Sorry. But there's, there is a serious problem with Americans. But families that received okay. She's caught up on the rent. She pays the rent. She did everything that she was told to do. They're still kicking her out. She's got a week left. There are the kids. Who does this? Sorry, guys, but the American people, on the whole, are not, they're, they're seriously a big contribution to the nightmare. They're lying. Their greed, their, you know, they're fine. They don't give a shit what they do to other people. You know, I, I'd love to see a protest of th those in the community in Lyons, Colorado, protesting that landlord kicking out that entire family. Because that landlord wants more money. Jesus. And then you actually have to argue with people that this is not right. You really? We don't know what's right and wrong. That only means that we are really not right. If you know somebody who's hurting, extend yourself to them. Ask them what you can do to help. You know, if, if you see something like that, your local news, and somebody is literally who only because of landlord greed then talk to your friends, organize something, and protest it to keep that family in their house. I'm tired of people asking me, who are adults, well, what can I do? Think about it. Think about it. 
There's a whole lot that people can do in their communities. The links are below.